you can be at home and take care of my kids. And yeah, but guess what? It's man, also okay for a man to stay home with the kids. That's just cuck behavior. But Hold it on, works wait. For, do you it think works. that a do you think a good aspect of masculinity is this prescription that men should provide for their families? That is a good aspect of masculinity. Yes. Okay. Do you think the only way to provide for your family is via finances? No, you can provide it in other ways, being emotional to your partner. Just control it. Be stoic about it. Do you think that you're Don't able to provide for your family? Maybe you're providing by taking care of the kids and making dinner and being there emotionally available for your children? Oh, yeah, of course. I'm not going to be a deadbeat dad. Okay? Wait, no but if you think that. that that is also providing for the family, why then is it cuck shit for a man to be a stay-at-home dad? Because he has no passion. He has no... Maybe his passion is to take care of his family. That is a traditionally a feminine role. To take care of a family? But yeah, okay, so what's up? You said you've been watching my debates with Andrew Tate fans, and you want to talk. <laughs> yeah, I seen one, uh, I think you posted it today. That guy was fucking nuts. <laughs> the spirit guy? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, that guy. Uh, I'm generally in that crowd, but even that guy's kind of, I don't know, kind of crazy. Okay. But um, what do you uh, what do you want to talk about? Uh, I mean, you said, let's see, you want to talk about, let's debate red pill stuff. Saw so yeah. your videos debating team um, fans. Okay, so what? Yeah, what red pill stuff? I guess. Well, first off, I don't think Tate should have got banned, but I understand why he did. Okay. Just to clarify that, uh, I hate that the red pill community has to be hive minded in like agreeing with every single thing. At the end of the day, these are corporations, and their policy on things are gonna stay still. You know what I mean? Um, and obviously, I guess Tate broke their TOS. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that could be. Mm -hmm. From an outsider's perspective looking in, I couldn't understand why people would think he's just like a, a 1950s fucking stereotypical woman hater. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he, but, he has said some pretty yikesy stuff about women, right? Yeah, I do understand that. But I feel like there's a lot to his character beyond those messaging. And I, I feel like a lot of the messaging he did put out there is kind of misunderstood. So the problem uh, with this right off the bat is that you're right. Yeah. Like everybody has more to them than their like inflammatory controversial statements. The problem though is that it's the inflammatory controversial statement, whether it's representative of his overall character or not, that violates TOS. Yeah. So it's like, it's not a social media company's job to be like, well, what is their overall character? It's like, did their post violate TOS or not? You know what I mean? It's um, it's really tricky too because he never had an account. I don't know if you knew that. Well, he did have an account on YouTube, but on TikTok he didn't. But they somehow banned him. Um, he didn't have an account on TikTok. No, uh, that was just all fans. Um, he had that whole affiliate code thing, and they just reposted his stuff. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, kind of interesting. But I do think there are some positives. I do think there are positives. Uh, obviously working out. That's a general positive, working on yourself, your mental health, mm -hmm. becoming the best version possible of yourself. Uh, I agree with all this. Yeah. And generally becoming a, you might not agree with this, high value man. What's your, what's your thoughts on that term? I don't know what high value man is. I, I just hear that kind of like tossed around in the, the red pill, the red people, pill yeah. type thing. Yeah. It's just used in contact, context um, in the dating marketplace. Um, in our community, we tend to believe that women generally want to chase the highest value men. Our, of course, there are cases where that's not the case, right? Like people meet naturally. But I'd say in most cases, women tend to want um, high value men. But doesn't and, I? Well, I agree. But like men want high value women. The thing is, is that it, it what the individual considers high. On that. We, we well, hold on. on that. Well, hold on. Is, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that, like, what it means to pursue a high value partner is going to be subjective, right? Like, so for me, a high value partner might be somebody who's really smart and is able to have really deep political conversations. For another guy, a high value woman, or maybe a woman is pursuing a quote high value man who, uh, I don't know, maybe he has a good job, maybe he's tall, maybe she doesn't care about his height, maybe she likes short guys. Like, 
what is and is not a high value man is incredibly subjective based upon who is pursuing that man, right? To a degree, everyone's allowed their preferences. I'm not going to deny anyone with that. But I think overall, most men are looking for a submissive, loyal woman who obeys his men. So that's what I don't get. Like, is is submissive woman who obeys her man? Like, that yeah. this is supposed to be a partner. You're supposed to be a team. This isn't like you're yeah. her father, except you get to have sex with her. Like, this is supposed to be a, a team thing. Like, you have to understand that that sounds pretty yikesy, right? Like, why should the wife obey the husband? Shouldn't they come to conclusions on their own? Or, excuse me, shouldn't they come to well, conclusions d uh, together? Obviously, there is a team aspect to it. But at the end of the day, the man should be the king of the household. Would you disagree on me on that? Well, yeah, I, when, when you <laughs> like, this is what I don't get is like that he should be like, maybe if there's a specific man who has that preference, like, I, I, I mean, I honestly think that's kind of yikesy, to be honest, like, I don't know what that would mean. H how would that look in a practical sense, right? Is this unironically like you tell your wife what to do and she obeys you like a child is supposed to obey their parents? Or I don't know. The problem that I have, though, right off the bat is... If you had said, like, well, some guys want to feel like they're in full control of their house. Okay, I get that, I guess. But when you say, like, men should be, then we have the problem. Because men shouldn't be. They don't have to be. And men are not any less of men if they are, are even if they're more submissive or if they're more teamed up with their wife, which is a lot more how things are, at least for, in, in my marriage. So, I don't know. All right. So, from what I understand what you're saying. You're saying what I'm advocating for or what our community community advocates for. You argue that it's wrong. It's bad. I'm okay with those. The idea that men should be in control and authoritative and the kings of yes. their castles and stoic yes. and should be completely it's, in um, control at all times is a very bad thing to advocate for. Yes, it hurts men. Well, it's seen in nature. It's a natural conclusion of what a relationship should be. How so? Um, well, hold on. I don't really care if it's well, human I'm nature, but I'm, I'm willing I'm gonna, to entertain this form of argumentation. What do you yeah, mean? I want to I finish this one point first before I begin. Um, you like to paint what I'm saying as like, correct me if I'm wrong, misogynist. Yes, you would say this. Um, I don't think everything you've said is misogynist. I think some of what you said is actually okay. misinterest. Oh, interesting. But... Uh, uh, basically old, old nuclear family, those kind of standards. I feel like those are ideal. If you look at today, divorce rates are higher than they ever been. Sing the rise of single moms, the rise of single fathers, um, inequalities and poverty and income between single mothers and fathers, single mothers struggling worldwide, particularly in the U S this is not a coincidence. I agree. Um, the, the lack of a strong man in a household and a submissive woman has led to more single mothers and fathers out there. Um, the relationships are just out of whack. There's no dynamic. It's uh, th There should be a leader and there should be a follower. Yes, we are partners. But at the end of the day, we are both wired differently. Men and women think differently. This is we the problem is that, things. first of all, like, it, yeah, you're right. But it's not just like men and women think differently. Every person thinks differently from the other person. And so... You're kind of running into these problems where you're giving me descriptors, but then using them as as prescriptions. Do you understand what I mean by that? Is like you're describing to me that men in nature or males in nature are the dominant one in the relationship, which, by the way, isn't actually true across nature. There are plenty of uh, animal species in which the female is, in fact, the dominant one. If we want to talk about insects and, and whatnot, um, but well, you're you're it, it well, hold on, wait, wait, just one second. You're describing oh, this. Which you're correct, like, yes, it's more common in nature for the male to be the, the leader of the pack or whatever. Sure. But your problem is that you're then gauging from that and saying, so that's how it should be. Which is not true. Because there are plenty of things that happen in nature that you and I would right off the bat say, that is bad. We should not do that. I mean, do you think that, like, animals ask for consent? Probably not. Like, if I got up here and was like, well, yeah, well, what's wrong with rape? It's natural, right, bruh? <laughs> You'd probably say, like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> you know? Well, 
well, that's a bit far off what I was saying. Um, but no, I'm I'm serious. Is that that only cancers. further? But that further solidifies the point that I'm trying to make. Is that there are things that happen in nature that we witness that we actually say we should not do that. So just if we can witness the male being dominant in a pack in nature, doesn't mean that that is how men should be amongst humans. Well, that logic, correct, could apply to a lot of things in nature. Like you see a praying mantis eat his mate's head. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Obviously, that's a bad thing. But a dominant male and a submissive female, this is a proven and time-tested thing for the male for a millennia but it's not when you say like um, submissive female you're usually talking about a, a woman who is doing something to provide at the home whether it's yeah. taking care of children or whether it's that's a good uh, thing what's that that's a good thing yeah but what i'm saying is that's not submissive that's just a, a woman being like a stay-at-home mom which by the way is fine like for me, it's more about I want women to be liberated and able to pursue what they want to do, right? So, like, if a woman yeah. has the desire and the goal to be a stay-at-home mom and she wants to be barefoot and pregnant, making dinner for her husband while he goes out and works, that's great. If that's what she wants and then she's living her life the way she wants to live it, fucking based. Cool. The problem, though, is yeah. is consistently what we're running into right here is where you're saying it should be that way. Well, as I said... Single motherhood is on the rise. Single fatherhood is on the rise. Yeah, but, Divorcees but are but on no, the rise. No, single motherhood uh, on getting, the rise is not because on, women are no on, longer submissive. Like, I don't know what that means. Hold on. Well, <laughs> we're stripping away of what worked in the past and pursuing new things. M women are becoming more masculine. Okay? I, I get your point. If a woman wants to chase your dreams of being a doctor, go right ahead. But to me, that's a masculine trait. I'm not looking for a masculine woman. Yeah, and you're I'm wrong, though. It's not a masculine trait. Me. It is a masculine trait. So there's a couple things. Is If it were a masculine trait... Well, hold on. If it were a masculine trait, you realize that's fully hinging upon society, right? Uh, expand on that. So if socially, at the beginning of time, or our current human civilization, right, we said, it is the manly thing to do, for the men to be at home in the kitchen wearing an apron cooking, then nowadays, today, there's a very high likelihood that you would be telling me that that's the masculine thing to do because they're culturally defined and they're socially constructed. So even if pursuing a job is in fact a masculine thing, then I would say very, there's two points to this is one, it doesn't need to be a masculine thing. So I don't care if it is currently or not. Two, there have already been multiple different studies that have shown that women are just as uh, rational and logical as men and that women actually benefit companies significantly when they are placed in leadership roles in those companies. So if a woman had some, I don't know, God-given or biological uh, place or role, it doesn't really make sense that women would actually be succeeding in these environments that you're currently labeling as being masculine. I like how you uh, said uh, women are just as logical and rational. I mean, yeah, unicorns are out there. Uh, no, on there average, cases, the average woman is, is about as rational as the average man, I believe. I, I can look into this also, a little bit more now. But also, men and women are wired differently. We are better in different roles. Women tend to flock to nursing roles, nursing positions, because they are more emotional creatures. This right? is this is what I hate about the red pill thing. The... the eh, all of you, no, 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 all of you guys have used the exact same cringy ass line. They are quote emotional creatures. <laughs> I'm sorry. Women do express emotions differently than men, and it is also arguable yes. that women do also experience more emotions than men. However, a lot of that is actually due again to society. You keep trying to make this appeal to well, women are wired differently. No, actually, men are socialized <laughs> to suppress their emotions and their feelings and never express themselves in a healthy way, which hurts men's mental health. You bring up the single motherhood thing. You're right. There is a yeah. problem right now with higher rates of single mothers. Do you know why fathers leave? Do you want to know why one of the biggest reasons why fathers leave? Why? Because they feel inadequate. If a man uh, is yeah, feeling uh, inadequate and he is unable to, in a healthy way, express those feelings, that is literally contributing to him leaving the family. 
I believe you're wrong. I think most of divor- most divorces are because the woman gets bored and unhappy and wants a more high value man. No, so she, uh, no, no. On, First of all, no, point. I have to cut you off again because you keep on saying really stupid Why? shit. Well, you made a lot of points I haven't addressed yet. I, okay. I want to have some you're time right, to you're right. Go talk ahead. to you about that. As we both know, courts are heavily favored in the favor of women. Um, there's definitely a bias. Women tend to win most of the settlement cases, and the guy has to suffer for the rest of his life. You are women definitely do proving my point right now, but I'll let you continue. Hold on. And then earlier you argued, oh, women, women are masculine because of culture. This is wrong. Okay. Men... I don't know if you're aware of biology, but men produce a chemical known as testosterone. Yeah, I'm Women familiar. produce estrogen. So estrogen tends to make you more emotional. You know what I mean? Testosterone makes you more uh, masculine. But regardless of the point, that's just the reality of biology. And um, on the point of women succeeding and stuff, um, do you know who the richest female in the world is? I know she's the one who divorced Bezos and Jane, all that. For yeah, some reason, yeah. that's like the biggest Bezos win for you guys. I don't understand, but I'd like to read this Russian first fit. really quickly. Russian fit. Are women more emotional than men? Not really. Study finds this is from 2021. Uh, Psychology, University of Michigan. Women have typically been thought of as being more emotional and historically have uh, even been excluded from participating in research. The authors of a study published in the journal Scientific Reports wrote this exclusion, the researchers explained, is partly because of the belief that their ovarian hormone fluctuations can cause variations, including in their emotions that could not be experimentally controlled. Interesting. That sounds very similar to what you were just saying. Furthermore, there are also certain biases in how people look at men and women's emotions. For instance, a man whose emotions fluctuate during a sporting event is described as passionate, but a woman whose emotions change due to any event, even if provoked, is considered irrational. So here's the full article. Let me see what this is, the conclusion. The researchers detected fluctuations in the emotions of men and women. They found little to no difference between the men and the women's emotional fluctuations. So there's that. And then you also have this study here. Study dispels gender myths about emotion and rationality from 2015. So um, let's see. Historically, empathy and emotion have been treated as the uh, um, basically antithesis of reason and rationality. The study calls this into question. Researchers found that women displayed more empathy than men and were more likely to have a, quote, gut feeling negative reaction to harming others. For instance, a woman who agreed it was acceptable to kill Hitler might still feel upset about doing so. The researchers say their findings are consistent with previous research, which suggests that gender differences in cognitive abilities are either non-existent or very small. So what they did, researchers presented 6,000 men and women with moral decisions about lying, abortion, murder, animal research, and torture. So they're, they're moral dilemmas that require a level of rationale and reason to, to think this through, right? Study results demonstrate that both men and women assessed how various decisions might harm others, engaging in similar levels of rational analysis for each moral conundrum. So these are two different studies that have both found the same thing, that maybe women feel more emotion or even express emotion more. That doesn't mean that they are less rational. Maybe I'll concede that point to you. Um, I don't have the sources to combat those sources, okay. but I do, I do stay with the claim that I think that men are more rational people. I would have to look more into that. But I you're saying that based that, on the fact that men tend to, on average, express less emotion, right? But we just established yeah. that emotional expression is not actually uh, uh, the antithesis of reason or rationality. Like, it can be, but you can also have level and healthy amounts of emotions and even have an emotional response initially to something, but still ultimately come to a rational and reasonable conclusion. And I think that, like, in a way, you're sort of reinforcing the big problem right now, which is that men are being told that in order to be a good man or in your world, a a high value man, it looks like suppressing your emotions and always trying to come off as being dominant and stoic and in control. And all this does is hurt men like men have emotions, too. We can we can quibble and argue about who has more emotion or who expresses it more. You're a man. I'm a man. And I know for a fact I have emotion. Men have emotion and telling them to just suck it up and stop being a quote unquote girl for having emotions like everybody else damages their mental health. I, I argue that women on average tend to be emotional, but I'm not going to lie and say that men are, we are. And I do see the case in that 
su- for a large portion of suicide rates might be attributed in that they don't know how to deal with their emotions. I sure. feel that the red pill philosophy argues that you can be in control of this. Um, you can talk it out with a group of guy friends or if you're close enough with a girlfriend, but you have to be careful there because girls tend to use it against you. Um, I feel that women are inherently, are inherently, uh, how should I put this? They get put off seeing a guy cry. Do you think that's anything to do with how men and women are sort of socialized in, in current day? Could be, but so like you're, you've, case, you've actually society. demonstrated my point now various times. So first of all, a woman overreacting to a man crying or, or being turned off by that is literally indicative yeah. that we currently have a social expectation for what it means to be a good masculine manly man. And that social expectation includes do not show emotion or cry or or really express emotions uh, to your partner or else you're somehow less of a man. That's bullshit. Men need to be able to have outlets to express their emotions, first of all. And if the woman treats them as less of a man, you're only demonstrating my point that there exists a expectation on masculinity that's fucking harmful. The second thing is, well, too, that. you brought up – well, you also brought up the, the uh, family court thing earlier, yeah. how they, they tend to side with women more. Do you think that has anything to do with social expectations that women are just innately and inherently better caretakers than men? Well, that idealism is very uh, charitable and idealism is pretty good. Uh, in reality, that woman would cheat on you and use that against you. She's texting her man. Wow. What a cry, baby. Uh, See, you say you're it's like culturally right rude. Into it. you, you've actually on, you're, you're like the on. result of an actual study I've hold read on, where it said, hold on, wait, I just need to get this out. It's okay, literally demonstrated that people that hold your types of beliefs that in order to be a good, strong, manly man, you need to be stoic and even hold the belief that women are kind of uh, more conniving and can't really be trusted. These types of people who hold these types of belief are more likely to act in violence against women or at the very least tolerate violence against women if, say, it's being done at the hands of their friends. So, like, this is just leading to harm. Why would you want this? Okay, I'm, a, I'm going to address your previous point, Okay. Okay. Uh, you argued that women culturally, because we're raised this way, uh, tend to think that men are pussies if they cry. I argue this is biological. Most women want the rock. They don't want Jonah Hill. Okay. Do you they think maybe they'd want a, a mix of both? Man. Do you think maybe they'd want like a strong masculine man who also has the the balls to like show his emotions and and not bottle it up like a upset like pouting two year old? It's like I don't want to talk answer about this. it. Answer this. Have you seen Fight Club? No. Oh, I guess it's not a good one. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know where it's going with that one. Um, okay. I guess we. I guess we just disagree on that point. Um, what's another point on the red pill we can uh, address? Well, like even when you're like they, they should be able to, um, like talk it over with bros. You know, right now there's a problem yeah. with men not being able to form friendships, right? <laughs> and do you think that any That's of that a subjective thing? That's a subjective thing. What? Wait, what's a subjective thing? Yeah, I know what talking point you're going to make. You're going to say, oh, guys can't talk to their guy friends because they're going to call them pussies. That's not No, not case. even. I'm going to say that it's harder for men to even get guy friends right now. Part of the reason is because, again, how do you make a good friend? How do you get a friend in which you're, you're comfortable around and you trust? Part of that includes being vulnerable with the other person, being willing to let your guard down. But men are being socialized that that makes them the pussy. So they don't want to do that, which also then hinders their ability to even make friends. And we know for a fact that males on average do thrive better in groups. They do better than one on one. They they tend to thrive in groups. So like this is what I talk about when I say toxic masculinity. And I know that that is like an instant buzzword that sends tingles down everybody's spine. But at the end of the day, you but you are you are you are demonstrating it right now. This idea that men should act this way when it's been empirically demonstrated to do nothing but harm women and harm men and harm children, arguably, if they're getting screwed over from getting custody of the children, then why would you be in favor of this? Would you argue that I'm toxically masculine? Because I see it the other way. I, I see. Like I think that the ideas you're advocating for are absolutely toxically masculine, if you want to put it that way. And I have empiricism that demonstrates it. Okay. I feel like though we promote healthy masculinity. Okay. Sure. Um, 
we tell men to work out, become the best version of themselves possible. Okay. Base. Um, Goku, he had to get stronger. He trained every day. You know what I mean? Trained every day. That's how we see ourselves. We want to train ourselves to become the best possible versions for ourselves. There's a lot of lost men out there, and I feel like that's why a lot of them flock towards Andrew Tate. He's reminiscent of the 80s action heroes we used to see back in the day. Sil- uh, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger. That This is the type of masculinity that we should be pushing for. Okay? We feel that... What kind of masculinity? I'm sorry, the, could you say that again? Like, you know, Rambo, Terminator, that kind of masculine, uh, you know, like that classic era of masculinity. I, I'm not really too Top versed up on my, uh, honestly, on my, my anime references and whatnot. Like, can you just give me like a couple behaviors that you think would be an example of, of positive masculinity? Because I could, if you'd like me to start. Well, you like to think that we think that men should be emotionless we don't think that okay stoic be in control of your emotions there's a difference you don't have to completely be invulnerable to everyone it's okay to share it just don't be so whiny about it okay because it it just it just pervades but do you think Uh, this is something that should apply to men or do you think this is something that should apply to humans like shouldn't women be in in control of their emotions also like wouldn't it be recognized as being pretty wait hold on wouldn't it be, be recognized to be like pretty dumb if, if a woman started melting down at her job because the business meeting didn't go well like that would be silly for a man and a woman to do this is the thing too is sometimes you you red pillars actually have good advice to certain degrees like hey work as hard as you can to make your situation as as good as you can make it um and, and mm-hmm. that's fine but i don't know why that should only apply to men like everybody should do that everybody should yeah, be in control no of their emotions no one's saying that no one should be uh Emotionally mature. I'm just arguing in this case for men specifically because we're talking about the red pill, which is a traditionally a male philosophy. Um, so uh, I think I was telling you about what well, what was I going on about? Um, we were talking about being stoic. Yeah, certain positions of red pillar advocates for. You know what a masculine man should be. Um, yeah. I've uh, let me collect my thoughts here. I got thrown off. Uh, so I already addressed stoic, being in control of your emotions, um, having a nice array of chicks to uh, switch around with, having uh, making well over, well, ideally, uh, hustle culture is pretty big in the Red Bull movement. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not too sure if you're... Is hustle culture that. anything and related to the whole like, hey, you can kind of work your way out of depression type thing? Uh, not exactly. I'm, t- I- I'm more or less referring to uh, uh, drop shipping, e-commerce, reselling, crypto, real estate, finance, uh, basically uh, money schemes. You know what I mean? Scams, um, yeah. Just like the type of masculinity argue, they're selling argue, you. It's a scam. Argue, that only arguable, d- It just makes your arguable. life worse. Like I-, I don't know why. It's a scam? The type of masculinity that the red pill types push for? Yeah. yeah if it's anything even comparable to what you've demonstrated? Yes, absolutely. Do you think Clint Eastwood was a scam? Who? Clint Eastwood. Um, is that another guy from a movie that sounds familiar? I probably should know. Yeah, he's an actor. He he had decent. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I feel like Clint Eastwood in that movie exudes what masculinity should be. Do you um, feel like when you you come on here and I I appreciate the fact that you sort of conceded this just I guess for the time being until you're able to look into it. But do you find it a little bit ironic that like? You're coming on here, and originally you sort of had the the idea that women are less rational than men, but like, well, they, all well, of they the, are. Well, they hold are. on, wait. All of the rationale in regards to the existence of toxic masculinity and the harm it perpetuates is yeah. on my side. I'm giving you the rational response here, and you're giving me unironically the emotional fifi's response. You're saying like, why can't boys be more like this anime I saw one time? That's not rational, bro. <laughs> Okay, you want some empiricism and facts? I, I just uh, I want you to gen- I want you Hold to on. explain why you would be in favor yes. of certain views of masculinity when they've been demonstrated to do a harm to men and women. Uh, back on that uh, female logical point, there's a huge gender equality, gender inequality in STEM fields. Um, I just wanted to bring that up because I forgot to bring it back, bring it up earlier. But uh, to address your current point, uh, what were you saying? Wait, why did you bring up the women being dis? 
not in not as many women in STEM. Yeah, that also supports my point. No, it is not, because you're arguing that women are irrational as men. Yes, but sometimes they are not able, or they are are almost socialized out of uh, participating in certain mathematical fields. Because, again, these harmful expectations that, well, you're a woman, you're less rational, you need to be quiet and content. Do you know who invented yes. STEM? Who invented STEM? I don't know, but I know that they were women. Oh. <laughs> I know that they were okay. women who invented STEM. Nice one. Okay. Nice so one. women uh, literally invented STEM and now are disproportionately not represented in STEM largely because of harmful gendered expectations. Like... How do they, we know that there's not some brilliant fucking woman who is like okay. able to, to, I don't know, find the cure for cancer, but she's being uh, reduced to a housewife because that's the traditional role that God has ordained for her or some shit. And that's a, an ideal thing. Did you know that it's 70 not ideal? What is ideal? Okay, hold on, wait, hold on. dude, come on. No, I'm you starting to get mad here. I'm starting to get mad at you because me off. I'm, yeah. I am cutting you off. Yes, I have to cut you off again. Huh. Because you have to have an honest conversation. Here. Okay. You know what? Go ahead. So a lot of women are moving into masculine roles and holding a lot of the jobs. A lot of college graduates actually are women. And women tend to not date down. So you have this culture where women only want to date up, right? Correct? Are you following me? Women only want to date up, yes. But again, we've already established yes. that what up means and is most going to vary significantly. And women, in average, are spending way more than women. Actually, 70 to 80 percent of the consumer base is women, college-educated women. Okay. What con consumer base for what? Oh, the rep, uh, in the general economy. Okay. Uh, I have my sources somewhere, but um, to the point. If they're not dating down, what's what's going to happen to all these other guys? So the red pill lends a hand to these guys and tells them good advice, get money. Get the bag, build yourself up, mm -hmm. and get a nice paying job. There's nothing wrong with what I'm saying. It's just a shame that women, that this dynamic has occurred because it's unnatural. A lot of guys are being pushed out. Do you think it's a coincidence there's a lot of incel fucking maniacs out there trying to shoot people? No. No, but I think that you're contributing hard. to that. Uh, I don't think so. I think like we're making your, men your ideals stronger. right here only contribute yeah. to harm on men, higher suicide rates for men, and then a higher likelihood that these guys are going to enact violence or tolerate violence against women. Like earlier you were complaining about like divorce rates or whatever. You realize domestic yeah. abuse, that's a pretty fucking big contributor to divorce. But your view of masculinity contributes to that. And you red pill types do this all the time. You're, you're complaining about divorce. Well, the type of masculinity that you perpetuate unironically contributes to divorce. So you're making up, you're contributing to the problem while citing the problem to explain that women are actually secretly the problem. You bring up the, the court thing. Yeah, it's because of harmful expectations that men are just bad caretakers and they can't be, you know, taking care of the kids. They need to be off working. Women are always the better caretakers for the kids. That's bullshit. But you bring that up to complain about it, but yet you are enforcing these views of masculinity that just reinforces those very ideas. Because women are good in these roles. A traditional worldview that we hold is... Some of them are, better. but do you also acknowledge that there are some men who also are good in those roles? No one's arguing that. It's just, we're just, I'm just advocating. Yes, but if it's the roles, court, the average, court should determine. Better. No, if it's the family court, the court should determine who is more equipped to handle taking custody of the children. Yep. Correct? It shouldn't be, and well, the, women on average are better with these roles because of evolution or some shit. So there you go, Karen. Take the kids. LOL. Like, no, it should be. That, that's the problem, though, is your worldview is essentializing. Because single women, single moms are destroying men in courts. You're aware of this, right? Men get destroyed in these courts. You know, I was watching that Amber Heard, Johnny Depp trial. I was, Jesus, what a... She didn't destroy him in should, court. <laughs> she had to pay more to him. No, 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 no. I was happy. This is how things should go. But there's a, there's a bias in courts today. I don't know what it is. Um, I feel like we're living in a matriarchy, to be fair. Um, the liberal media you is are pushing just a lot. Not, you're just delusional, bro. Like, you don't come think on. there's a matriarchy? 
No. Men are in disproportionate positions of power across the board. You go woke, you go broke. They're putting women in all our movies. I mean, how, how much did the new Star Wars sequels gross? Uh, I don't know, but enough for them to keep on making it? Billions upon billions of dollars? I, I don't know. You don't, you don't think she was a Mary Sue? That's not a good written character. Who? Ray? Yeah. Okay. This is just... Now you're actually just becoming misogynistic. What do you mean no, they're putting no, no, no. women into our movies? Like, yeah, no shit. Women are people and they can be in movies? What are you complaining well, about right now? This is the problem is you have like really <laughs> damaged views of women. Maybe you got like your heart broken in high school or some shit and <laughs> you are harboring resentment against women. And this is the exact problem with this whole man pill, red pill crap thing is that you have convinced yourself or you've at least been convinced by other losers that women are to blame. And you know what? It's a fuck easier. It's a fuck ton easier. Okay. To just point the finger at women and say, they're the problem. They're mean. They think men are gross. They're only dating better men. Uh, they're leaving me out. They're destroying me in court. That is a lot easier than coming to grips with the fact that right now there are cultural expectations that are placed on men that are actually doing the harm. But it doesn't matter which one's easier, right? It matters about what's the more rational response, which is... We have to go with what the data suggests and the empiricism. Why is it then that men who subscribe to this view of masculinity are more likely to uh, domestically Take abuse their wives? It. Like, wh why is that? If that's good or if that's better right, for society, right. why? First off, if you have the nerve to hit a woman, you're not you're not a man. Okay. Uh, the red pill is inherent, in my mind, inherently pro-female. We want women to live happy lives. Okay. I'd argue that we're pretty big feminists in that regard. We differ from your normal feminists, but we argue in, for feminism in that it's okay to stay home and be a mom. You don't have to work. Mm -hmm. You don't have to work. You can be at home and take care of my kids. And yeah, but guess what? It's also okay for a man to stay home with the kids. That's just cuck behavior. But Hold it on, works. Wait. For, Do you think works. that a good, a good element of masculinity right especially since yeah. you're you're in favor of this sort of nuclear family which i mean i am too largely i mean that's what is the best environment for a child is two parents married living together raising kids this applies to gay people too. well, it's well, not well, well but I, I think men, men can have multiple partners if needed okay before we get on to whatever the fuck dumb shit you just said let me just address the the first thing okay do you agree yeah. that it's a good quality of masculinity that men should provide for their families uh, repeat the question. Sorry. Do you think a good aspect of masculinity is this prescription that men should provide for their families? That is a good aspect of masculinity. Yes. Okay. Do you think the only way to provide for your family is via finances? No, you can provide it in other ways, being emotional to your partner. Just control it. Be stoic about it. Do you think okay? that you're Don't able to provide for your family? Maybe you're providing by taking care of the kids and making dinner and being there emotionally available for your children. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm not going to be a deadbeat dad. Okay? Wait, no but if you think that. that that is also providing for the family, why then is it cuck shit for a man to be a stay-at-home dad? Because he has no passion. He has no... Maybe his passion is to take care of his family. That is a traditionally a feminine role. To take care of a family? Uh, to be at home and take care of the kids, a housewife. Uh, I don't think house husband is a term, Hunter. It doesn't need to be a term. What I'm asking you is very straightforward. If you think that it's true that a way in which, first of all, you've agreed that it's a good quality of masculinity that right, men should provide me, for them. Let me rephrase no, 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 I need to rephrase. Let me rephrase this. You've agreed men that a good quality of masculinity is providing for your family. Men. You've also agreed yes. that you can provide for okay. your family that doesn't require finances, but yet you're against stay at home dad. Why? Because that's a low skill labor job relegated for the female. No, she's why is it relegated that. to the female? Because she's better at those things. Why? What if she's not? What if in this particular relationship, the wife is way better at making the money and she has a really then, high paying job and the guy is actually better taking care of the, the kids? Case. I'm talking on averages, okay? Also, I have to, I have to make a point here. Men are inherently mo have more value than women when it comes to dating, okay? 
So a low skill labor job like being a housewife, that's fit for a low value person. Okay. High value men says you, right? but okay. Like you're high value you're, men. you're literally use you're you're giving right now the sound bites that are gonna be used in court as to why you shouldn't get the kids, but go ahead. <laughs> Funny. But high value men, correct, right? We don't need to do those things. We can have multiple partners, right? No. But at the end of the day, we provide. We provide no, this is uh, this is a very individual thing. So if if, if you're with a woman who's agreed to be in a, a open relationship with you, then then you can be with other people. But if you're married, no, you cannot be with other people. That's a form of like a mental abuse at that point to go cheat on your partner and be like, "Well, I'm a man, so therefore, <laughs> come on, bro." Do you think I don't know these things, Hunter? I've been married before, okay? Okay, so this would explain some of your resentment towards women then. Keyword what, before. <laughs> well, things happen, okay? Um, but you're like projecting it, the, dude. The you're, you're, I know, and I'm sorry that that happened to you. And there have been plenty of cases in which men have been completely fucked over by their partner. And it happens sometimes. And when it does, it's shitty. But you acting as if, well, because you went through this shitty thing, now this is how it is on average, you are making a irrational and emotional point. You're saying because you went through a tough time, which I'm not diminishing, by the way, I'm not asking for personal details, but it, it's obviously divorce or whatever yeah, you're fucking you're sucks. You're but you're gauging from your personal experience and projecting on everybody. And you're like, well, the woman fucked me over in this case. So women are on average just more conniving. They're going to use everything against you. Like... How would you feel if this was flipped? If you had the blue-haired feminist saying, hey, my friend got date raped the other day. All men are rapists. Or men on average are rapists. You'd probably be like, what the fuck? Rape culture isn't real, first off. I didn't bring up um, rape culture. I brought up an example in which you would not be okay with gauging from a personal experience and then projecting a broader claim across a group. Well, because biology speaks for it. History speaks for it. Eight, eight, 8,000 years ago, 17 women produced for every man. Men are meant to have multiple wives. Uh, the today, in today's society... No, no. I'm not going to let you what? get on this tangent right now. I'm not about to get on this big, long about tangent what? about what... You're like, men should, are supposed to be having more partners or some shit? No, this is hinging upon the relationship that you've agreed to. If you want to be like a scumbag who sleeps around all day, like a little fuckboy who hasn't ever grown out of his, like, high school days, then go for it. That's your prerogative. But no, you don't get to get married and then just kind of grant yourself the ability to go sleep with whoever you want because you're a man. Like, come on. You have to recognize that that would be abusive if the wife had not agreed to it prior. To quote Andrew Tate. <laughs> Are you just trolling right now, bro? I'm sorry? Are you just trolling right now? Because you're being consistently stupid right now and you're making me really mad. What point do you want me to address specifically? Because you go 30 miles an hour. I you're spewing out a billion different fucking points and I'm just trying to address well, some of them. <laughs> why is history and biology on my side? Okay. Why, why, why is it that my view of life has been consistent for thousands of years? It hasn't been. There are, again, examples in it nature in which been. there have been females that are the dominant in the herd or in the species. There have been examples throughout history of where women are, in fact, leaders. A lot of the times we have this misconception that men were the hunters, women were the gatherers. No, actually, they've even found archaeological evidence that contradicts that. They found women or female skeletons holding spears in the middle of hunting. Like, no, this idea that your worldview is just how it's always been is not necessarily correct. And second of all, That's... even if, hold on, wait, 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 even if you were correct that for the last 3,000 years it had been this way, I would not give a single fuck. Because at the end of the day, I don't care what was done for a long time. You know what used to be really common and, and to be done for a long time? Slavery. What? But guess That's what? Arguably... We're not right. going to say, hey, it used to be this way and it's been this way for a while, so surely it must be right. No. Now we have empirical evidence that shows that women are not less rational than men. Now we have evidence that shows that this type of masculinity is harming men and contributing to higher suicide rates. And if you care about men, you should get your fucking head out of your ass and recognize this. You're being emotional, dude. And I have evidence that men are dying on these cases 
in large part because of women. Okay? Dying on what cases? The suicide? I made the point before. Yeah. So you're back to just I'm, blaming it on women. Well, it's so easy. Well, you just have like a, well, you're like how the <laughs> lefties used to say everything was the fault of the Nazis. Like you're just doing that again, except it's all the fault of the women. <laughs> you're like women in a very roundabout way. You've like, you're actually like the SJW lefty cock type. <laughs> we can quit with the add on and continue with the discussion. All right? The discussion's going to be ending um, soon. Well, all right. I guess I want to cover this next point then. I Let's argue that the red pill. We'll done. All right. I argue that the red pill is good for minorities. Proceed. Hold on. Um, in dating apps, Asian women tend to date other races other than Asian men. And the same thing can be seen for black women. Black guys tend to date other races. Are you following me? Black guys tend to date other races. Okay, sure. We, they, both of these groups feel very undervalued in the dating marketplace. I feel like the red pill is specific to Asian men because this doesn't really apply to black women. Uh, can lend Asian guys a hand in becoming high value men so they don't have to obey these societal standards. Okay, continue. Oh, I'm just making the point here. I think red pill is a good thing for certain people. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, why couldn't we just do my my view, which is like, hey, uh, date people you're interested in so long as they're of legal age and it's consensual. That's, that's, that's a given, okay? Uh, no, but why, you're Asian like, guys... the red pill is better for minorities because Asian women tend to date outside of Asian men. Yeah, okay, what, who gives a fuck? What does any of this have to do with red pill? Because at a certain point, once you get the bag, once you become a high value man, you don't have to obey society's standards and how they perceive you. You don't have to stand all this bullshit when it comes to dating. People, women should tend to chase the wallet, okay? At the end of the day, that's what we provide this for is, people. This is the misogyny right here. Why this is this I, misogyny? Because you're, again, essentializing that women are just these conniving, uh, manipulative bitches who are out to steal your money or, or they're drawn to the wallet. There are some women that are like that. And those women are really shallow and lame people. That's not all women, though. Well, was that all we were going to talk about today? Well, I enjoyed our to, discussion. You said you want to talk but, about uh, red pill stuff, but like it's kind of sad because at the end of the day, you're you're causing a lot of these problems for men, but then you're invoking those problems to try and and say that look, it's the women's fault that men have these issues. Like, well, you're at fault right now for why men have some of these issues. No, I'm not. Yes, I'm you making are. Men happy. No, you're not. Why, you're not. Why did Andrew Tate have such a following? I don't know, and I don't care. There are a lot of dumb fucks out there. Who gives a you shit? You should care. At the end of the day, what you're advocating for is harmful, contributes to a higher rate of suicidality amongst men, and contributes to higher rates of domestic violence, which contributes downstream to uh, more divorce and more custody battles lost. And I can argue that single mothers are killing men, okay? Okay, how? And that women are replacing the job force and they won't date down, ignoring 90% I don't of know other what guys. date down okay? means. I think that we need to wrap this conversation they, up. And honestly, this might sound kind of low, but like you might want to just go see a therapist because it sounds like you went through a gnarly divorce, which fucking sucks, mind you. But like, please don't take your resentment out on women as an entire group. Like, women are not a monolith. Remember at the beginning you said, the Manosphere red pill aren't all monolith. They, they're different and unique. Women are not a monolith either. It's a man's burden to hold this pain, okay? It's my burden to we... continue this fucking conversation. Thank you, and maybe we can talk another time if you want to. Just hit me up, but I'm done. Uh, yeah, thank you. Have a good one. <sighs> okay. Oh, my God.